Hey, I'm Nick Cathlon Gamer. Welcome back to FM23, Newton Heath, episode 29. We continue on with the season with Shaq Ford getting his third straight Player of the Month award in the league. Just phenomenal record. Again, scoring more goals than he's had appearances in each of the three months. This time, it's seven goals from five appearances with a 7.96 rating. And naturally, he's taken the Young Player of the Month as well. So, Three straight months with that award is just crazy. Uh, this was actually the first month that we didn't have additional teammates on the list of the top threes, but what we did get was Sarsavik uh, getting the goal of the month. Normally I have a custom view on how I want to look at stats, but I don't have anything with that necessarily, or at least not yet, for this team. But just looking at some base things, you can see a lot of, a lot of green, a lot of good form of the, over the last five a lot of good average ratings on the season I mean we're looking at most of these guys being better than a 7.2 you know as high as a 7.9 average rating Shaq Ford 7.9 all season long 15 appearances 18 goals plus an assist as if he had a few more at that department but Ollie Tanner is supplying that from that central attacking mid with seven assists six goals from him uh, great combination there and you've got like Ola with five assists uh, only 14 appearances though he has missed the last two to three uh, with no no sorry that's that's Ola on the left Lapalo Bai has missed a bunch of games he's only had nine starts but his stats are down a little bit but his ratings are good he just has two actual uh, assists but it's been uh, uh, Hercules, who has been playing in his spot for most of the season, uh, or at least recently with six starts, seven appearances off the bench. I mean, he's he's certainly getting in a fair bit for, you know, not your top guy. Doing well, 7.24. Massive match, but really not an important one. It's only the first round proper of the FA Cup, but we are playing host to Northampton. League one side, so a couple tiers above us. It's a big, big test for the club of just how good are we. We've been good even for this fifth tier after, you know, last year getting out of the sixth and into the fifth. And we still lead the league. We are coming off a couple straight draws, though, so that league, that league lead is a bit on the slender side right now. But let's see what we can do, you know, at the helm. And with I was doing some squad rotation in recent games. Uh, had some injuries, had some suspensions. We're just starting to get healthy. Healthy. Uh, Lapalo Bai has only been cleared to play 75 minutes, so he's not going to be playing the entirety of this match. But otherwise, we have our first team. Donisian, I got Brooks in, uh, but that's about it, squad rotation wise. Ola, nice steal. Neil. Tanner threw for Ford on the counter, but that one is blocked. That's out for a corner, though. Nice corner there. 13th minute so far. Still early days. Team, the ratings are starting to pick up though. Sarsavik. Ford. Offside. Thought he might have been. It's all us so far though. I mean, they just had their first shot attempt at a .01. Yes, forced the turnover. Ola, Neil. Bro oh, Brooks. Tries the through ball. Can't get there. Ton of cliff. Neil. Brooks. Now Ola. Ola takes it to the byline. Brooks. Neil inside to Sarsavik. He's got some space. He's going to wind up and take a shot. Gave the defense plenty of time to block that one. Sarsavik finds Pike, but aggressive defensive tackle there just in time. I mean, he nearly wipes out Pike. Tonicliff wins that one. Brooks. Sarsavik switching play over to the right. Lapalabai finds Pike. Pike with some space. Beats his man. Gets the cross in Ford. Free header needs to do better with that one if you're gonna beat a League One side. But speaking of beating a League One side, holy crap, we are, you know, we're all over these guys right now. But this could turn in an instant. Just like that. Free header on a long range free kick. Defensively, we're recovering the ball well, but uh, those are always gonna be a concern. Free kicks from dangerous positions. Tanner, great through ball. Pike, he's got no support though. He's gonna lay it off for Lapalo by. Finds Sarsavik inside, finds Neil. Neil doesn't take it. Brooks, Ola. Back to Brooks, Brooks wide, hits the side net. 
but we uh, we should have at least one goal at this point. Pike, early cross, Ford, might have been offside, but the flag stays down intentionally, pointing that it was onside. Brooks, Wilson, easy possession, not a major press though, and not a lot of movement off the ball at the moment. Pike finds some space. There's some movement on the ball. Sarsavik finds Lapala by finds Ford and he scores. Yes, we lead before halftime. All right. Pike takes the sideline that they exposed. Sarsavik lays it off, but Lapala by. That was a great pass from Sarsavik and Lapala by. Easy there. Pass and finish for Lapala by and Ford. Tanner, Ola. Inside to Tunnicliff. Needs to do better, but center back. You trust their head, not their feet. Believe me, I know. I might only be 5'6, but I score a lot more goals with my head than I do with uh, with my feet. 5'6 is is code for really short in uh, in meters. <laughs> Sarsavik. Pike. Here we go again, Lapala by inside. Oh, goes for the high cross for Ola instead of keeping it low. Ola gets the header on target to the corner. The keeper makes a decent stop and held onto it too. But yeah, yeah, I like it. I got a little XG there, but we're, we're approaching a second goal. Now, let's see though. They are a team that's probably not playing their best 11. Expect subs and expect a tactical change coming out of the second half that uh, suggests that they're going to be aggressive. So we stay positive, but we are ready to make early changes tactically here if they come out uh, a totally different team. Brooks down the sideline. The early cross, Lopalo can't win it, doesn't even really try. Sarsavik recovers though. Oh, that was a beautiful ball. And Ford was almost in the right position, but they got it away. Ola ends up getting a chance there. Ford picks up our first yellow. 55 minutes play. No sign of a varying tactic. They've only had the three attempts. Wilson does not blow this one like he did earlier in the season, costing us a game. Pike again uses the sideline, takes it all the way in, ends up taking it himself, and Eastwood saves it. I'm sure why he did not blast that low across the goal with the pullback pass to a teammate. Oh, Neal does not win that one nearly. Costs us an equalizer. So here they come. Ten minutes and they've had two more attempts. Tomlinson. Wilson recovers with the interception. Not a very good clearance, but Ford is going to track down that poor clearing header. Wilson. Nice interception again. Cliff, Brooks, Neal, out to Brooks again. We're using that sideline. These guys are playing in tight, giving us a lot of wide space. Neal, Brooks recovers. Sarsavik blasts it from long range at Eastwood. All he can do is palm that up and over the crossbar. Tanner for the corner. Wilson trying to get on the end of it, but Eastwood grabs it first. And we've played well over an hour now. We are... Very much at the, let's start thinking about coming away with something and not just, hey, where's my one more goal? Uh, XG moment. Ton of cliff. Not highly rated today. Let's go ahead and swap him for Pierre because we know what he brings. Uh, Neil not having a great day. We've got plenty of options there. We'll go ahead and bring on uh, Whitehall. Yes, Whitehall above land, or do I want to bring on Wiggett? Wiggett's more defensive. We'll bring on Wiggett. All right, starting with the changes first. Couple minutes, three more minutes, we'll start changing tactics. Tanner! The Palavai gets a piece, but they still have possession. And Wilson heads that away for tries to get up to it. Wilson again. Apollo by now. Picks it up. Great through ball. Pike. That was the right kind of pass, but uh, we are not getting on the end of that one. That was Tanner. No! 
totally against her on a play. Of course. You know, over the last 15, 20 minutes, it was getting noticeable that they were coming more into it. But that's just one long ball that they outran us to. That's it. Or that's that's all that was. Defense wasn't beaten. You know, nothing like that. There was no mistake. That was just pure pace. Their pace beat our pace. Lapala by. Pike inside to Wigget. So now we got to get back into it. Wilson, I love how he steps up and wins those headers. Pike. Now Wigget over the top for Ola. Oh, man. He had Ford inside. It would have taken a first-time inch-perfect ball. A lot to ask for from a fifth-tier player. But that had goal written all over it. If he had the vision and the ability to pick that pass out on the one touch. But didn't attempt it. Wigget over the top for Ford. No way he's getting to that one. 10 yard head start. Pike, Sarsavik, Lapala by. Again over the top for Pike. Those two linking up so well. Wigget inside. Brooks oh, scrapes the top of the net. He goes just over the crossbar. 83rd minute. Running out of time. Attacking. We got to go for it. Here's the, here's the thing we're at home against a league one side and have been the better team all game long. If we finish in a draw, we're going to go on the road and probably lose. Then again, you know, this is a team that we've really outplayed, but I honestly, I, I think by far our best chance of going through is going through two one, you know, scoring a goal in the next 10 minutes. Even if that means losing this thing 1-2, because I think a draw is going to be as good as a loss. Tanner is struggling and tired. Uh, what do we have for our third sub? New. Uh, Sarsavik can play up, so we have Whitehall. And then we'll swap, swap uh, Whitehall and Sarsavik. Uh, Sarsavik. That ball gets nowhere, but again, Wilson stepping up. Ford! He's got a little bit of a chance here. Quarter chance. 85th minute. Pike. Wilson. Possessing. Playing out of the back. Here's Pike. Lots of space. Sarsavik over the top for Whitehall. They still haven't swapped. They haven't gotten the instruction. Sarsavik was still playing deep. Whitehall playing on top. But Sarsavik ends up setting up a really nice ball for uh, Whitehall. Whitehall's going to recover this one and really misplay that. Yikes. Back to the defense. Wigget in space. Cuts inside. Sets up Whitehall. Last that one. Put a goal on top of the goal. I think that was still over the top of the crossbar. Whitehall. Nice header there. Sarsavik. Oh, that was a beautiful ball for Lapala by. Defense intercepts. Nice job keeping that in. Plays it to the corner. Pike. Whitehall. Early cross. Oh, look. Oh, scores. He got it in. Wow, what a beautiful header. Eastwood was all over that thing, but cannot keep it out because Ola puts that in the perfect spot. That thing comes in off the woodwork. I don't know if that was crossbar or post. It was definitely at the corner. It's post. Oh, it's keeper's hands. Keeper gets his hands to it. Oh, gosh. Eastwood. I, th I was trying to give him credit for uh, being in the right place, doing the right thing. And no, 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 Ola. I mean, that is very well placed. Uh, Eastwood was more focused, it looks like, on trying to hold on to that ball as opposed to palming it away, right? Making the stop. He seems more interested in possession. Ooh, four. Needs to do better on that. Brooks, uh oh. What's going on? Offside? Offside. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, and I'm still going like, hey, we're attacking, and hey, we're not time-wasting, you know. No, seriously, we're not. <laughs> I was still celebrating the goal. Ola, some space, room for another. Ford, I don't know what's going on with Ford today. Ford's having a rough one. He's got a goal, but... Whoo, boy, we're through. Second round, FA Cup. Ah, 
Not quite as big as uh, Wrexham beating Coventry 4-3 on the road. <laughs> but XG, XG-wise, that was harsh. I mean, it was harsh that it was that close. It was closer to 3-1 or 2-0 than it was 2-1. In a moment, I'm going to catch you up on how we are doing in the league over the last handful of matches. But first off, the next match, Gateshead. Uh, Lineup-wise, I'm going to finally arrest Shaq Ford. He, he needs he needs a day off uh, before he gets hurt. Ola, Tanner, they're both playing because I still need some attacking support. I can't rotate everything. Just Whitaker and at striker. Uh, Sarsavik also getting a rest today and then brooks is in because we have two guys out on international duty aaron pierre uh always uh with granada he's you know the, one of the best granada players done a scene with saint lucia uh, we uh, we have a third one young player who's on the jamaican under 20s but those are the only three internationals that we have so those two unavailable today so getting you know, minor squad rotation, but the big one being a rest for Shaq Ford. Let's see if we can still get a result with uh, somebody else in at striker. Oh my, we do not completely dominate the game. 20 to 2 on the shot, 63% possession, but we only manage to land four on target, and the keeper stops all four of them. Goalless and third straight draw in the league. By the way, third straight draw. One win prior. We left off uh, 12 matches in with a much bigger cushion than what we have right now. But for fortunately, Eastley just lost to Boston United because they've been in second for a while. And their gap, like ours, have both come down. I mean, we've, we've dropped six points in three matches. Starting to get a little worried about this recent form and filled. I think it's filed. Our, our next opponent, I know I've had it before, but been a while i've forgotten quite how to pronounce their their name but anyway filed filled uh they're a decent team i mean they're fifth or sixth maybe seventh in the league and they're, they're not that far down and we are on the road uh definitely bringing Shaq ford back in though so let's see if uh if that one goes well there we go now we bounce back three nil halftime four one final uh penalty for Tanner in the 37th but Ola getting the early scoring started in fact we were scoring in loads Fa uh, Shaq Ford adds another one in they scored on their only shot on target those are always unfortunate when that happens when you know you come out and in fact we scored four out of our eight shots on target I mean their keeper only stopped half of them easily drew with Yeovil so we're actually back up to a five point lead now Harlepool has matched them on 32 points all three of us with 17 matches played. Still not even halfway. So why don't we go ahead and get to halfway. Let's push forward a handful of matches. Well, mm, we're, we're going to have a FA Cup second round coming up. We'll push forward to that anyway. And then we'll check in and see where the team's at. Uh, I don't know how many matches away that is, but I'm guessing it's you know the next couple of weeks. Coming up to the end of November now, and let's just check in on the flow of things on the season so far. Of course, preseason went very well for us. Uh, start of the year went really well after that opening loss, which was a harsh one because we had outplayed them. We had just one draw after that in the first two months of the season. or And then, you know, in the third month of the season, Kidderminster losing 1-0 was the only loss that we had picked up. And then we've had that little stretch, right, where we had three straight draws in the league, but we've now rebounded with 4-1, 3-0, and 3-1 wins with two out of those three on the road. Pretty good stretch. And, you know, in two of those matches anyway, against pretty high opposition in the league. So next up is Reading. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, these days they are 13th in League One. We've had one result against League One. I would love to see our page look like this at some point. Our estimated value is 100 million above there. So apparently we are doing things quite well. Over time, I'm implementing a few new things. I'm gonna start building on our tactics. I've started to build on the match tactics 
so that there are scenarios and what to do if we are you know down by a goal up by a goal how late is it when to change things up how to change things up so that the team would play more the way that i would manage the side you know if we were actually controlling each and every match let's take our first look at the data hub though as you know we're far enough into the season uh close to halfway we'll we need to check where the standings are i think we are still a few games shy of halfway we're still leading the league by the way uh, even after that stretch but goals per game xg per game highest in the league tackling percentage is better than average passing percentage is better than average shot, shot percentage is better than average but shots per game top of the league conceded per game xg against per game all better than league average meaning we give up fewer and you see just how strong we are in the dedicated attacking area shot percentage itself is the only thing that's not just astronomically higher than everybody else but more chances and shooting better than average is you know it's a good combination uh team defending we give up a little bit more than we would like to but i think part of that is you know we're we're a very attacking team it's kind of bound to happen right perfect example the, the one that most people are familiar with these days of this level is obviously wrexham if you've seen welcome to wrexham you have a good enough clue as to how they play, what's going on. I've been following them closely long before the show came out. Uh, yes, after I heard that Robin Wright had bought the team, but they, as a squad, bleed goals way more than they should, but it's because they are such a strong attacking team and that it's so weird to suddenly see them have nil-nil draws uh, with how they are as a team, how they constantly go on the attack. But, you know, teams are park the bus massively against them to try to stop them from scoring you know bags and bags of goals and uh, so it happens sometimes it does happen sometimes uh, you know even at this level i love to see that our fouls is way down because that was a massive massive problem in the first couple of years uh, and even last season it was still a bit of an issue now the team looks to be right at the top of the league we don't commit fouls our clearances though we're not doing that either uh, or blocks but that's because the other teams aren't really taking shots tackle numbers are below league average but the tackle percent is good the xg the interceptions that's the thing that's what we get is we get a lot of interceptions i think one of those key reasons why we don't see so many shot attempts why we don't see a lot of xg and why we're not needing to make crazy plays desperate plays is how we regain possession we regain possession in the middle of the park for the most part the middle third is where we get the ball where we recover the ball where we intercept the passes we almost recover the ball more in the upper third than we do the lower third so the defensive area we don't have to recover the ball there anywhere near as much as other teams in the league our problem of course playing high is you know as we saw in that last game right long balls over the top can occasionally beat us pretty bad on speed but it's rare enough because obviously we're getting the results Shaq Ford already with 21 league goals now eight more than second place Charlie Wilson has also jumped to second in the average rating behind Shaq Ford Tanner is equal for league lead on assists. Man of the match goes to Shaq Ford. Uh, Heggy not leading the league in shutouts, though. Eastley, the second place team, actually lead the way when it comes to shutouts. But I think compared to us, eh, we've got a pretty healthy advantage in goal differential. Overall, we're outscoring opponents a lot more. But like I said, the style going attacking tends to lead to you know a goal a game kind of going against us but if we're getting three a game comfortably and we're winning by two goals i'll i'll take three one every day over scraping by for one nil or the occasional rare two nil uh, or the two one kind of you know victory or a lot of one ones and nil nils so i think long term 
three one three one three one over and over again is uh, a welcome result. Compared to the entire rest of the top six, we have a game in hand. Uh, just about half the league has played twenty matches now. We're still on nineteen. Even despite that, we've got the lead still. Eastly, only two points behind though, so it's what you make of the extra games that you have. No pressure on us at this stage as we're not quite halfway. Halfway will be 23 matches played, right? 24 in the league. So still got a little ways to go, even just to reach halfway. But we're going to be cruising into the second half. And short term, we're going to be focusing a little more on, well, FA Cup. But that might be one more rat match. I mean, Reading could easily beat us. We beat one league one side. That doesn't mean we're going to beat the next. We're not supposed to be being the league one sides we're not dominating this league by that much we're not that much stronger than them but we do have a good team we have a team that is good for this level and here's something i i think i'm noticing about the national league i'd like to look at historical data over the last decade or so to confirm this hypothesis that i'm forming in, in my head but from what i've seen in recent years the national league is so hard to get out of with only two promotion spots especially out of a 24 team league and a rule set that varies from the football league above it that allows for more spending like wrexham have done like others have done before them uh, salford city has done in recent years i think that not the league as a whole, but the top of the National League, you know, that top four, five, six teams in the National League, maybe, just maybe, are better than most of the League Two sides. Most. As in, it wouldn't be that hard to get promoted from National League and kind of go right on past League Two and then slow things up around League One or Championship. And I've done that in previous playthroughs. The National League is tough to get out of. It can take a long time. I've, I've had playthroughs before where, you know, you stall for four or five years in the National League, and then you win League Two the next year, and then you league you win League One the year after that. Uh, and, you know, in the years prior, you were climbing 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th, and then you stall out in that fifth tier. It's the hardest one to get out of numerically, you know, mathematically, with just two teams. But I think that and the rule set kind of contributes to at least the, the pool of clubs at the top of the National League are better, stronger than certainly, you know, the, the mid half or bottom half of League Two, where it's a little easier to stay alive when only two teams get relegated. You got a lot of teams going up and down in, in League Two. So you've got a lot of bam, 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 you know, back and forth, back and forth, up, down, up, down, up, down. So it's pretty easy to get promoted. So if you're good, you're not staying there long. But if you're bad, you could stay there for ages. All you have to do is be better than two teams. You know, currently, Mansfield, Stevenage. All you have to do is be above those two squads and you're good to go. You're staying put. So I think it's it makes sense to me that that is the case that a team isn't going to necessarily stall out there you're going to stall out there to avoid relegation you could be just good enough year after year after year after year and hang on and you know looking at this you got one team bad and you got one team struggling a little bit more than those around them but you're looking at you know a small gap you're looking at six points between 22nd and 13th They've played 20 matches. Uh, the difference is two games. That's a small difference. It's a very small difference. And even, you know, top of the league, it's only 37 points. Newport County's taken five losses. Accrington and Stanley have five losses. They're not racking up a ton of wins. Based on record alone, Yeovil, who sit third for National League, would be leading League Two with that same record if they were in that league. So, if we can get out of this one, if we can bypass here, I think we can keep climbing right up that ladder 
at least for the next season or two. I don't see why not, right? Especially as that reputation part grows. But there's that reputation thing again, right? Money speaks volumes. It helps. And we are finding some guys. Some. But we've had a lot harder time with signings this year as we're starting to compete with others for signings. They're getting paid one way or the other. We might be able to pay them more, but only so many players are going to listen to that kind of language, right? Money talks, but not for everyone. For others, heritage matters a lot. Family matters a lot. You know, they want to play close to home. They want to play for a team with a high reputation. Not everybody would have signed for Manchester City over the last 10 years. A lot of players weren't too interested in going there. But money talks. There's enough interested folks out there that, you know, the right amount of money does the trick. And then, you know, doesn't hurt signing up a guy like Pep Guardiola to, to come in. Then all of a sudden, oh, now there is an attraction beyond just the finance. Apparently we need to just go high, hire Pep and we'll be good. <laughs> Fire me, bring on Pep. Sounds like a plan. Anyway, that is going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.